Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. We recently just got more information regarding Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now I know I haven't covered smaller news updates, like when we got Grafi Eye, which is pretty cool, but I didn't want to do a whole video over it. That and I decided to take a little break. Although Grafi Eye is super dope. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's marketing has been doing a pretty good job at churning out some of this new information, and consistently at that. This new trailer, while it doesn't show anything like super groundbreaking, it does introduce some cool little things here and there. So let's go ahead and go through the trailer. I'm not going to look at every little detail here and there, but I'm going to talk about the stuff that stood out to me personally. And don't worry, we'll get to these guys here in a bit. First off, I want to say that the map itself, when you go onto the map screen, it looks clean. Like in other open worlds, you have the ability to set markers and waypoints. You'll probably be able to fast travel or fly somewhere, which would be really cool. I don't know, man. I'm a sucker for clean UI, and this really looks nice. I can't say the same about the battle UI, though. I don't know. It just looks a bit generic to me. Maybe in time it will grow on me, but as of now, yeah, it's okay, I guess. But let's get back to the maps, because we actually do get a good look at the mini-map, which... Yep, that's a mini-map, alright. It's kind of weird to see a Pokemon game using a mini-map. I don't remember there being one in Arceus, so this is probably the first time that we've seen a mini-map in a Pokemon game, which is cool. But yeah, I mean, the mini-map looks clean, just like the normal map. Thankfully, in this new Pokemon trailer, we do get a good look on all three stories, and exactly what they are. So one of the stories revolves around Team Star. This is the quote-unquote evil group in the game. They seem to be more antagonistic than straight-up evil, but regardless, I love the idea of just having like school bullies as the antagonists in this game. I don't need to see another world-ending plot or anything like that. Honestly, just a bunch of stuck-up brats who think they can just push everyone around is a really fun and just a simple idea that just easily works in a setting like Pokemon. Especially in this game when your character is enrolled in school. It just makes perfect sense. These rebellious students have like fortresses that you can raid which is kind of weird. You know having kids like build forts and you have to raid them. But this is Pokemon let's not think too hard about this. It's pretty cool that you can just bust through the doors and just start attacking. Which, interestingly enough, we do actually get to see a glimpse of auto battle in this scene, but we'll talk about auto battling here in a bit. Team Star have bosses, of course, which so far I'm really digging this design. Yeah, it looks a bit goofy with the boots and all, but I don't know, man. I kind of like how weird and off the wall it is. The next story in this game is Path of Legends. This story basically revolves around Arvin, or at least it seems like. You go on a quest, searching and gathering ingredients. You get to face off against Titan Pokemon, kind of like the noble Pokemon in Arceus, which is really cool, but probably not so noble, if that makes any sense. Basically huge colossal Pokemon, and you know what? I dig it. I don't know how that's going to work in a game like this, you know, having a huge colossal Pokemon on your team, possibly following you around, but what the heck, I'm here for it. And finally, the last story revolves around, you guessed it, the gems. Of course, in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you can do any gem in any order. Now, the problem with that is, is that rumor has it that the level scaling isn't there. According to the leaks, there isn't any level scaling, which basically means that, yeah, you can do any gym in any order, but you can do a really hard gym at the beginning of the game, and then when you go to an easier gym, it's just flat out easy. It's not going to scale to your level and be a challenge, which would really suck. I really hope that's not the case, and I'm not going to subscribe to that leak just yet until we get the game, of course. Because who knows, that could probably be fixed up in a later patch or right before the game releases, I don't know. We do get a good look at the new chairwoman of this game, which she looks pretty cool. I like her design a lot. Also for each gym, you have to do a test in order to even face the gym leader, which is pretty cool, not gonna lie. 
It's kind of like Sun and Moon in that sense, like Trials, I want to say, but kind of done hopefully in a better way. I wasn't a big fan of the Trials in Sun and Moon. So I hope these tests or tasks that they have you do, I hope they're varied. I hope they're interesting. And of course, we can't go on with this video without talking about the new Pokemon. Up first, we have the new crab of this game, Croft. This might come as a shock to you. I'm not much of a crab person. Crustaceans haven't necessarily been my forte. However, I kinda dig this design. The beady eyes are a little weird, of course, but I don't know, it kinda adds to the charm, in a way. That and the fact that it's a straight up rock type is really interesting. And if we're considering his titan form, Oh yeah, he looks cool. I really like this design. And then next, we have the Mega Man crossovers. Who would have guessed that Mega Man and Mega Man would make it into a Pokemon game? I sure as heck didn't see that one coming. But seriously though, these guys look insane. I actually love these designs. At first, I thought it was a bit tacky because they don't really look like Pokemon. But the thing is, they look super cool, even though they don't really look like Pokemon. Like, I've looked at them quite a bit, and I still don't really see them as Pokemon. Croft, that's a Pokemon. Bidoof, that's a Pokemon. Armor Rogue and Cerulege are Mega Man characters. Or at least Digimon characters. These guys do not look like Pokemon, but at the same time, they look so cool, I don't even care. Armor Rogue is straight up Mega Man. You cannot deny the resemblance. That arm cannon of his is a dead giveaway. Although he uses both arms for the arm cannon, which is interesting. And then you have the Edgelord Cerulege, which, I mean, come on, man. This design right here really solidifies my choice in Violet. Come on. A fire ghost with swords? Yeah, this is my pick. Don't get me wrong. Fire Psychic for Armor Rogue is really cool, but I just love this design a little bit more. I gotta hand it to the Pokemon team. These designs are striking. Okay, with that all the way, now we can talk about the new big feature, which, I mean, it's a big feature, but it's kind of not. It really just depends on how it's implemented and how it's executed in the game. Auto Battles. Auto Battles are under the name Let's Go which is a cute callback to the Let's Go series of Pokemon games. But what does it really mean when it says auto battles? Because in my head, I instantly think of mobile games when they have the auto battles, which is not a good look for a Pokemon game on a console. But before we judge, let's see what exactly it does and how is it implemented. When the Let's Go feature is activated, you can send a Pokemon to battle wild Pokemon without really ordering it to do anything. It can even find Pokemon on its own and just start engaging in battle with it, which is kind of interesting. Because now this Pokemon that's following you isn't just there for looks. It's its own being, or at least when Let's Go is activated. And it seems like that this feature is customizable in a way. You can either have it auto battle any kind of Pokemon that comes your way or or just have it stay by your side or look for items. It seems pretty customizable according to the website at least. This is a great way to easily grind for XP and items without going into a million Pokemon battles. It looks quick and simple and it looks like you can command them to attack a certain Pokemon if you want, which is really nice. The only major issue I see with this mechanic is shiny hunting. Let's pretend for a sec that it's kind of like Arceus. You're out in the wild, you hear a little tune, and you're like, oh, okay, that's a shiny. And your Pokemon is auto-battling. You turn the corner, and boom, that shiny Pokemon's dead because you weren't paying attention to your Pokemon auto-battling. And it just killed off a shiny. Which has me think, can you customize this mechanic so that it doesn't kill certain Pokemon? or so that it doesn't kill shiny Pokemon. How far does this mechanic go? Because if that's the case, and you know it kills a shiny Pokemon without you realizing it, or it's just too late for you to go and retrieve that Pokemon, 
then yeah, I might not actually use this mechanic a lot. But if you are able to customize, which it does seem like you can, then great. I'm probably going to be using this a lot for grinding XP and all that good stuff. I hope it doesn't take away too much from the core gameplay, so I really hope there's a nice balance to it all. But let me know down in the comments below how you guys think about the new Pokemon trailer. Are you excited for the auto battling mechanic, the let's go feature, if you will? And let me know your thoughts on the new Mega Man Pokemon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see y'all next time. God bless.